It just got so bright all of a sudden. This lighting is not optimal. But hello, welcome back to another vlog. I'm picking up the camera to just film a few things that I want to get done in the garden, probably today and tomorrow, and kind of just make this a cozy vlog. I also want to go for a walk tomorrow, so I'll show you um, just where we're going to go for a walk because we live in such a beautiful area and I don't really show it too much here on YouTube but I think we're going to go to some of the beaches and just have a little bit of a walk through one of the forests so I'll share that but I also want to get some stuff done in the garden today. I've actually been quite busy over the last few days but I haven't really filmed. Sometimes I just need um, a few days in the garden where it's just me and it's also been really nice and quiet school holidays here are actually quite nice because people it means people are home so you know they're taking care of their animals and I don't know it's just not as loud um, with dogs barking and things like that so I've been really enjoying just yeah spending some quality time in the garden and you didn't really miss too much um, what did I do I ended up just moving one of the tarps down in the flower farm uh, and prepping that bed. Scott gave it a good broad fork as well. And I am deciding what to plant in there. I think it really does need to uh, have some sugarcane mulch on it though. So I want to pick some of that up um, hopefully tomorrow morning and finish off that, figure out what I'm going to plant, probably status or stock. And yeah, what else have I been doing? Um, not not much just really pottering around um which is the plan for today as well one thing that i do definitely need to do is prune this hydrangea back i feel like this is the third time on this youtube channel that i've pruned this back um because yeah it's the third season that i've needed to so i'm going to tackle this um and this time not prune it back as hard as i did before so this is a pretty old variety of hydrangea. I think it's got really big blue flowers. These are obviously really small because it's not in season, um, but it's been planted here for years and years. My Ulma planted it um, back when they lived here. So, you know, a long time ago. And uh, yeah, it needs a bit of a trim back. You can kind of see all of the shoots are starting to sprout. Um, and this blooms on second year or third year wood so last time I think I just cut it way back um, and yeah I didn't really have hardly any blooms this year so this year I'm just gonna prune back probably um, about half of it rather than what like the two-thirds that I did the year before and then hopefully on these new stems um, we'll have flowers on these so yeah, I think that is the plan. The thing though with hydrangeas um, is they root really easily. So if I prune this and then use like these um, stems as mulch, they'll actually start to form roots. So I'm just gonna find a place in the garden uh, where I can pile this up, which is gonna be a little hard because it is super wet and super muddy. Um, but yeah, I'll have to just do that and let them dry before I can use them as mulch or I might use them as um, other, I don't know, things that I need around the garden in terms of sticks and canes, but I do have quite a few others, a few other hydrangeas planted. I've actually propagated from that plant, like I've got one over there, and I have heaps of pots of them, and I've sold heaps at markets, so um, yeah, I don't really need any more hydrangeas in the garden. But this one is always like a focal plant, kind of like the end of the cottage garden that you look down towards. So I really want this one to be full of blooms this year. So yeah, I think I'm going to tackle this first after I finish my morning decaf coffee and my homemade cookie and then yeah, we'll tackle this. Alright, 
hope you enjoyed that little time lapse. This is the aftermath. I have two nice piles of hydrangea cuttings. It looks dramatic, I know, but I think it'll be okay. I said this last year and it wasn't okay, but I'm sure it will be okay this year because all of these uh, stems, most of them didn't actually flower this year. Sorry, they weren't flowering last year. So I'm hoping that they do this year. Um, and yeah, we'll see how we go. I just need to do probably a little bit of tidying up, a bit of raking all the leaves. I'll just like rake them back in to mulch this, take out some of the grass, um, and maybe just trim off a bit of that side because it looks a little lopsided. But there are so many new shoots, and the way I prune, the way I prune everything basically is just to prune down to find the node of the plant. So this is a node is, um, it'll be different for each plant, but it's basically where the plant can branch out. And you can see there, there's a little green shoot. So this plant will branch out here and probably on the other side as well. And that'll create some new shoots. So I'm hoping, really hoping that I've done this right. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how we go. I really love hydrangeas in this one looks so beautiful and I mean it looks so sad now um, but I wanted to do it now so that I could just put on green growth over the next few weeks and I guarantee you in like a few weeks this will start to look green again and not as sad as it's looking right now. I've just been listening to a masterclass from Maura Gamble. I love her YouTube channel and I love a lot of her content. It's a masterclass all about why the world needs more permaculture. Um, I'm kind of thinking of actually doing a permaculture course because I've always wanted to. Um, I think maybe in the next year I might. If you've done one, please do let me know. I feel like I've kind of, I do know a lot of what is in the course already, but I still think it would be really useful to do the course. I mean, one day I would love to kind of be able to teach permaculture and gardening a little bit more seriously, um, other than just doing these YouTube videos. And Morag Gamble has always been um, just my, probably my number one permaculture inspiration. So yeah, I've, I've really been enjoying her content and I'm trying to implement more permaculture principles into this garden. Um, so yeah, that's something I might do in the future, I think. But for now, um, I'm gonna leave all that. I'm gonna leave everything where it is. <laughs> um, Scott can help me later in the day uh, to move everything. I don't know if you can kind of tell, but I am definitely getting a little bit of a baby bump. So yeah, things are definitely getting a little bit harder to do in the garden. Um, but I propagated some society garlic the other day. I literally just hacked it in half and then half again uh, from the society garlic that I pulled out of the cottage garden a few videos ago. And I'm just trying to figure out where I would like to put these in the cottage garden. So this is said society garlic, <laughs> looks horrific right now, but you can be so rough with this plant. And this is actually one of my favorite permaculture plants. And I've grown this for years and years. It was actually one of the first videos I put up on YouTube was about society garlic and how you can propagate it. It's a, um, I love it because it's a fantastic option for growing garlicky flavored herbs and that kind of garlic flavor if you're in the tropics or subtropics uh, because the leaves really do taste and smell like garlic and the flowers are also the same the flowers are just beautiful they are uh, like a bright pinky purple you can use them in salads and if you can't grow garlic if you're not in a climate that can grow garlic you know you're getting those cold temperatures then society garlic is definitely something I would consider growing but what I did I had some really big clumps of it um, that I took out of the cottage garden I cut it all back and I have about four or eight I don't know actually how many I could get more chunks out of this but I think what I want to do is plant this around this olive here uh, I planted this in uh, another video and I actually have a volunteer sunflower that's been growing all winter it's about to flower. Love that for it. <laughs> so I'm just letting it do its thing. It's loving life. But I think I would like four just around on all the corners here. Because you can see I always get weeds in this area. The grass always encroaches and I need something to just 
stop that. This is gonna do that because it bulks out really nice and dense. It doesn't draw too much nutrients. It's great for planting around fruit trees um, to confuse bugs. And it's just all around really great plant. So I think I'm going to plant four of them on the corners here. So I think that's gonna be the next job is to weed this, plant those. When I get some mulch, I'll probably mulch this as well, but um, it shouldn't be too hard to weed. It's just a lot of, I think this is some kind of like chickweed or to be honest, I don't actually know, but it's really easy to pull out of the ground. So yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do next. I think that looks a lot better so I have four planted one on either corner um, I did leave in the sunflower and there was another plant here a linaria that I will leave there um, but I think what I'm gonna do is come through and probably tomorrow um, cardboard all of this around all of the plants and then mulch on top and that'll just save me a lot of time in terms of weeds popping up in summer but yeah i am happy with this and these will grow so quickly i still have um a few more left in the bucket so i'll need to find another spot for those that's kind of the main jobs that i actually wanted to get done today i didn't really have too much else planned um i might do a little bit of weeding around here and maybe in one of the other garden beds i've got some editing and computer stuff to do so i've got to do that as well but yeah, I, I might just do a few other little odd jobs in the garden while I continue to listen to all of my permaculture content. If you want to leave your favorite uh, permaculture content creators in the comment section, that would be very helpful. I've been loving Morag, Gamble and Sean from Edible Acres. They're kind of like my go-to at the moment. But I'm always looking for new um, people to watch and listen to i really like listening to a lot of videos so um or podcasts so yeah let me know if you've got any good recommendations so i wasn't actually going to pick up the camera again this afternoon i was just going to do a little bit of gardening and then have a relaxing afternoon but i've noticed something and i want to share it's very disappointing but as i was doing a few jobs i noticed something so i wanted to share what it is so I'm currently just doing some jobs around the side of the shed. Sorry if it's a bit windy. Basically what I'm doing currently is taking the leaves off all of those hydrangea cuttings and then I'm using them as mulch around some of the trees that we have. Because they make a really good mulch and I don't want anything to go to waste. I'm always thinking of ways to build soil in my garden. But I looked down here and this is where I had some brassicas planted and I have some anemones as well. And uh, I no longer have brassicas planted here. <laughs> the bowerbirds have gone through and eaten absolutely every single one. So I had four cabbages in here and about 10 broccoli and they're all gone. I can kind of see like the remnants of some of them. Um, and these, these were here this morning. So they, they're not slugs. Like I don't see any slugs around. And the plants, like they're still here a little bit. You can kind of see one there. <sighs> but yeah, it's not looking good. <laughs> so I think tomorrow's job, I'm going to have to move this net over here. Maybe replant a few. But yeah, they've just decimated all of them. <laughs> I did have a few beer traps here uh, because I thought I had a slug problem down here. But I, I haven't seen too many slugs unlike up at the cottage garden so I think it's just been bird damage here so that's kind of a little frustrating but 
I was probably a bit naive in thinking that it would be fine, um, knowing how destructive the bowerbirds can be. But it's fine because I have so many more seedlings, so we'll replant and net tomorrow. But anyway, I'm going to finish this job and then head inside and I'll pick this vlog back up tomorrow. We're going to go to breakfast and go for the walk that I was talking about. And then we'll get some more garden jobs done tomorrow afternoon. I hope you enjoyed those few clips from our walk this morning and then we went and had a really nice breakfast at a local cafe um, and then I had a little bit of a nap and now I'm gonna go back out into the garden and finish off a few jobs it is super windy out there so I'm probably not going to be talking too much to the camera but I will just film a few things I think I'm going to just replace some of those broccoli that were eaten by the birds move the net over and add some mulch around to just one of the garden beds in the flower farm and maybe around that olive as well so that is the plan for this afternoon so i will take you along with me
right I'm pretty much done for today so I think I might wrap this garden vlog up I'll turn you around and show you what I have done so I replaced about six of the broccoli in this bed I moved the netting from the anemones over here and the birds can't get them now obviously but you know the slugs might so we're just gonna have to see wait and see what happens if they do get them it's fine because I do have some more up in the cottage garden and I'll just plant onions here instead so that is full of broccoli in there I have a bit of space at the end which I might do some leeks sorry about the wind um, and then I have some cabbages over here that I replanted and then my anemones have actually started to flower which is amazing um, so it won't be too long before we have some blooms and I can start selling some bouquets again and you would have seen also I did um, some sugarcane mulch on one of the beds down in the flower farm just to prep that for the week and I've also been um, mulching around that olive tree up in the cottage garden it looks a little bit messy at the moment because um, I used Woolies bags it's just what we get um, our groceries in when we go and pick them up sometimes and uh, yeah they work really well to smother weeds so I have um, cardboard under all of this and then sugarcane mulch and then I've just kind of like you can see where the society garlic was planted so um, they will eventually grow and fill in all of the corners so yeah everything is looking pretty good I think next week we are going to get some cooler weather come through so it'll be interesting to see how all the plants hold up um, but I'm sure I will do another garden vlog next week to show you what I get up to but thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed just seeing a little bit of um, myself pottering around in the garden. If you did enjoy this garden with me video, then make sure to give it a like and subscribe for lots more content. It really does help me out and is completely free for you. And if you want extra videos, you can head over to Patreon where I just share kind of like extra vlogs and pregnancy related things all over there. Thanks so much for watching again. I hope you're all having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. And until my next one, happy gardening, everyone. Bye.